In this video, I'll show you how to use Integromat's if else function. We're going to create a Google form which will populate a Google Sheet with responses. Then in Integromat, we're going to create an if else function for responses. The main tool we'll be using in this project is Integromat. You can sign up for an account at integromat.com. The link is in the description. We'll be using Integromat's free plan for this project. However, if you exceed the limits defined on their pricing page, you will need to upgrade your Integromat plan. We'll also be using Google Forms and Google Sheets. For convenience, I've timestamped the video in the description. To begin, we must create a Google Form. Hence, you'll want to go to forms.google.com. From here, you'll want to click on Start a new form. I'm going to create a simple form for the purposes of this tutorial. Of course, once you see how I create my form, you can replicate it or edit it. As you know, the goal of the tutorial is to teach you how Integromat's if else function works. Hence, I'm going to speed through the creation of this Google form. There we have the form. It's a simple quiz style form and it asks the responder who won the 2020 F1 World Championship. We're going to use the if else function in Integromat to return to us whether or not the respondent answered correctly. Before switching over to Integromat, click Responses, then Create Spreadsheet, and again, create. Now, all of the responses from the Google form will get stored in this Google Sheet. That's what we want. Also, I want to add another header into this sheet, and I want that header to be answer. Let's quickly format the Google Sheet. I'll make the headers bold, then I'll space the headers appropriately by simply clicking in between the columns. Perfect. And before we create and test our automation, I'm going to submit two answers to the Google form. One correct answer and one incorrect answer. I'm going to speed through submitting these answers. They'll show in the sheet in a moment. Perfect. These pre-submitted answers will help when we test our function. We can now switch to Integromat and begin setting up the function. Integromat labels automations as scenarios. Hence, to create our automation, we must click Scenarios, then click Create a new scenario. Now you'll want to search for Google Sheets and select that, and from here, click Continue. We can now begin defining the steps of our function. First, we'll want to configure the initial step for Google Sheets. Let's click on Google Sheets. We can now define its trigger. For the purposes of our project, we'll want to define Google Sheets trigger as Watch Rows. If you haven't connected your Google account, you'll be prompted to do so. Once you've connected it to Integromat, you'll see the following. Let's go through what must get done here. Spreadsheet, you'll want to select the sheet that we created. For this project, the sheet that we created was titled F1 2020 Championship Quiz. Sheet. You'll want to select the sheet within that Google Sheet. Table contains headers. Yes, we created a header for our table. Our headers are in the first row. Hence, ensure A1 to Z1 is in the input box under rows with headers. And limit, we can leave that set to 2. Now click OK. 
We can now begin defining the next step in our function. We'll now want to add another Google Sheet module. We can define its trigger as update a row for this part of the function. And you'll want to make sure that the mode is set to select spreadsheet and sheet. Under spreadsheet, select the same sheet, which was F1 2020 Championship Quiz. Then select the sheet within that Google Sheet. Now let's go through what must get done here. Row number, you'll want to dynamically insert the row number of the Google Sheet. So in the input box from the drop down, select row number. Ensure that table contains headers is set to yes. Then let's go through the values. In timestamp, we'll want to dynamically insert the timestamp into column A. Name, dynamically insert the name into column B. Email, dynamically insert the email into column C. The question, which was who won the 2020 F1 World Championship, you'll want to dynamically insert that question into column D. And then in the answer column, we're going to create the following function. So let's switch over to the next tab. And from here, we'll want to select the if function. And we're going to start building out the if function here. So to begin, we we'll want to go to the start of our if function. And if we just go back to the start tab, what we'll want to do is insert who won the 2020 F1 World Championship. So the answer that's going to be presented in our Google Sheet. So if the answer for that question equals, so we need to go back to the functions tab and select equals. And we know that the world champion for that season was Lewis Hamilton, which we wrote as L dot, and we wrote a space and then Hamilton. So what we're saying there is that if the answer to that question, and remember it's the answer that's going to be inputted into the Google Sheet, is equal to Lewis Hamilton, then, so after the semicolon, insert right, else, wrong. So there we have a very simple if-else statement. Let me go through what this function that we've just created means again. So the function is saying that if the answer to the question, which driver won the 2020 F1 World Championship, is equal to L.Hamilton, then return right, else wrong. When that completed, let's click OK. Let's define when our automation should run. Along the bottom, click Schedule Settings. Let's set the run scenario to once. Of course, you would set a specific time if it was a recurring task. Now click OK. Let's click the wand to auto align our functions. And along the top, let's rename our function. Let's rename it to if else function. Pretty simple. Let's now test our function. Click run once. Now that's run, let's switch over to Google Sheets to see the result. If you created the function correctly, your Google Sheet should be working as follows. We have the answers field populated for us with the use of the function. With that working, we can go back to Integromat. We can now exit editing. Our automation is created. And if we go to the scenarios page, you'll see that it is created and ready to execute whenever we want it to. Once you get this working, you'll be able to use that function in many other scenarios as well. I hope learning how to use Integromat functions helps you a lot.
This project is now complete. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this no-code project, please give this video a like. And if you want to be notified of the latest projects that I publish every week, please subscribe. I'll see you in another no-code project.